Hello, and welcome to another McGuanago Library Virtual Tech Camp. I'm Noah, and today we're going to be talking about virtual animation and how to make an animated video. Here is an animated video that I just quickly made, and it is of a ball bouncing up and down. The software that I'm using to record my screen is uh, not great at recording up to the frame rates that the video is playing at, so it may look a bit choppy as you're watching this video, but this is um, the gist. It's, it's uh, just a ball bouncing up and down. By the end of this video, I hope to give you the tools and the knowledge to be able to make this same video, whether it be in the program that I'm using now, which is Adobe Animate, or in any free animation software. Two that I think are really great are uh, Synfig, which is one, it's spelled S-Y-N-F-I-G, and I think its interface is very similar to Adobe Animate, uh, so it can be very easy to translate a lot of what I'm going to talk about today into Synfig, um, as well as TupiTube, which is spelled T-U-P-I-T-U-B-E. And it's not exactly the same as what's here at, um, on Adobe Animate. However, it is very easy for beginners to get into and learn a lot of the basics of animation, um, but also has a lot of great things to really expand your knowledge on how to animate and you can really go far and push your limits with 2 p um, as a free program. So to get started uh, we're gonna just go into file and create a new animate document and I'm just gonna go standard 640 by 480 and these Two numbers gives the width and the height of the space that we're going to be able to work in. And really the larger the numbers, the um, the higher definition your video is going to be. So if you have um, a 4K, like right here, a 4K animation, you're going to have a lot more pixels, um, which will make your video a lot more clear as you're watching it. However, uh, certain computers, depending on the strength of your computer, will have a lot harder times being able to run these 4K videos, um, especially if they're at a higher frame rate. So right now I have the frame rate just at 30 frames a second. So in these frames that we have, and I have about 30 in this animation that I've made, um, which is why it's about a second long, just over a second. Um, there, the higher the definition, the harder it is for the computer to be able to run higher frame rates. So at this point I just think it'd be easiest to stay at a pretty standard 640 by 480 and create a new document. Here's our workspace and at the bottom, which is consistent with any program we use, is the timeline and that shows you all the key frames or um, individual frames in the video that you're going to make. So it's going to start out, just show each individual one, each of these rectangles is an individual frame that you can fill. And this little bar here is where you can slide across. I don't have any anything around so it's not going to let me slide right now, but it, it, once I start to add more frames, I'll be able to use this slider to be able to shift through and see each individual frame on its own. Here is just a kind of a zoom out or zoom in. Um, into each of the frames themselves and so you can see there's you can have hundreds and hundreds of frames depending on how long you want your video to be if you want it to be minutes long you're gonna have thousands of frames if you want it to just be a second or two long it's gonna be not even a hundred so this is just where you're gonna see all of your frames individually and if you expand it really greatly eventually you're just gonna be able to see exactly what's on the frame itself these options here also give you just some more things to go through the um, workspace and your timeline. So these arrows will let you kind of shift through each keyframe individually. And um, this button here is an insert keyframe. So as you're animating, this insert keyframe is where you're going to go to continue to add frames and move your objects around. Um, so when you're creating your bouncing ball, we're going to take the ball, add a keyframe, move it a little bit, and then just repeat that process a bunch. 
And this option here is the onion skin um, within a selected range. So an onion skin, if you think about kind of an onion, all the layers inside of it, there are all the previous frames that you've made. And so when you're creating an animation, it's really useful to be able to see the previous animations and the previous frames that you have to make the adjustments to the next frame uh, look natural and look good when you are playing the whole thing together. So you don't want your ball to be shifting all the way around left and right, or you don't want it to be not moving a little bit and then moving a ton. You just want it to look consistent throughout your whole animation. Editing multiple frames just lets you select as many as you want and uh, create classic tween. It's That's kind of something that you probably won't be using right away. It's something for more advanced animation. And then center frame, just placing things in the center of the frame. And then the loop, you can create a range that you want the animation to loop through. So it's just going to go through to where you want it to end, then loop right at, at the beginning. And then these are just to let you preview your animation. Here uh, you can see your layers, and we're going to be creating new layers soon, uh, later on for our background. But to start out, I'm just going to keep our one layer, and double click there, and I'm just going to name it ball. Because what this layer is going to be is just the ball that we're going to bounce up and down, and we're going to create that animation first before we do anything else. So to start out with our ball, we're just first going to have to create the ball itself. And so you're going to come into here, I'm just going to grab the oval tool in this toolbar. And in the toolbar we have the selection, transform, uh, brush, line, rectangle, oval, uh, text, paint, and eraser, as well as a bunch of other tools that you have to your disposal. There aren't really a lot of, uh, well, in Animate, a lot of these tools are very similar to Photoshop and other uh, Adobe drawing programs, um, but they also are very similar to any other drawing programs that you have. So like Synfig and TubeTube also have these tools readily available. But all we're going to need right now is this oval tool. And to create a perfect circle, I'm just going to hold down the shift button and that's going to keep my circle the same the whole time. Because if I were to not hold down the shift button, that's what would happen. I'll create a weird oval. Uh, but instead, I'm just going to hold down the shift button and release. And there we go. Now I want to move my whole circle over a little bit. And it has a little outline. You can see there's a little outline. Um, but I want to just bring the whole thing. So, whoops, don't mean to rotate it. I'm going to take and it'll let me kind of mold this around if I ever want to. But instead, I'm just going to move it, select this outline, and delete it because I don't, I don't need it. And I'm going to be moving it around. I don't want to have to worry about moving the outline and the ball itself. You can also, when you're creating your uh, circle, just selecting this little outline bar and then just not giving it an outline here with this little white box through the cross of it. And so now we don't have an outline on our circle and we can just move it around however we want anywhere. And this little uh, faded blue circle that you can see where the ball was is kind of an example of that onion frame that we're talking about where it shows you exactly where it was before. So if I wanted to move the ball down and I wanted to see where it would look compared to the previous frame, that's how I would see it. So I'm just going to put it back where it was, and then I'm going to add a keyframe. So now you see down here in the timeline, a new keyframe was added, and I'm just going to zoom in closer. And our keyframe is added right here in number two, and but now we're just going to grab it and move it down just a little bit because. Um, how I'm thinking right now is when you drop a ball, I want it to kind of be slower at the top of its bounce and then speed up as it gets closer to the ground. And then when it hits the ground, I want it to kind of squish out and flatten a little bit and then bounce back up like any bouncy ball would. 
So I'm going to not put a lot of space between the initial frames and then as the frames, uh, as, a, as we get further down and we have the ball moving faster, I'm going to put a lot more space in between it because as the frames continue to go, it's going to make the ball look like it's going faster. So just move the ball down a little bit and then we're going to insert a keyframe. And if I want to see these onion layers, I can click that and now you can see that those are going to be permanent. Um, and this little range here will show each of those frames. So I can see the past two if I want to. And I'm just going to hit the down arrow a couple times and now you can see that's where our ball is going to stay. And then I'm just going to add a keyframe, move it down. And let's say I wanted to see all of the uh, onion layers at the same time. I can bring this all the way in or only see just the previous one. I'm just going to keep the past two. I find that to be nice and easy to use. And I can move my ball, add another one, and shift it down more. And then add a new one, shift it down more. And we're just going to keep adding a bit more space each time um, until we think that it's uh, at about a good pace down. And if you add too much space right away, the frames go by so quickly, you can imagine 30 frames a second, that's um, a lot of frames going by very quickly, which means there aren't going to be a lot of, um, it's not going to have a lot of time in one spot. So if you put a bunch, let's say you put your, ball this far away each time that's going to get down to the bottom within three or four frames and you're not even going to be able to see it go down because it'll just go way too fast um, especially the higher frame rates that you have but then when you think about adding more frames per second that's going to mean that you're going to have to make even smaller adjustments but it'll make your animation look a lot better the more frames you have per second however again like I mentioned before the strength of your computer is kind of what decides how many frames per second you can have because if you don't have a very strong computer, you won't be able to do as many frames per second. Just because your computer will struggle to be able to run all of those frames. But I'm just going to keep going down here. And um, I think it's a pretty good length. And then down just one more time. But um, this time I'm going to kind of add some stretching to the ball. So I'm going to make it kind of shrink in just a little bit and stretch it out this way just as kind of a cartoonish more exaggerated idea of what a ball looks like when it starts to hit the ground and um, what it looks like after it's hit the ground and is rebounding back upwards and so then I'm going to insert a new one and then just bring this down a bit further and squish out my ball place it like that Actually, let's make it a little bit, let's do another one of it stretched out just a little bit, just like that. So it'll be really stretched out and just hitting the bottom of the frame. And then we're going to create a new frame, rotate it, whoopsies, and uh, just get this here, take that out, shrink it down, and it's now squished down a little bit, and yeah, that'll be good. Then one more frame of it squished right at the bottom. Perfect. And then what we're going to do is, you can see all these frames that we have here, um, and I can kind of run through it with my cursor and you can see that's the ball animation As, and we just did it falling down because what we're going to do now is take the um, take what we have and just reverse it and then copy it so then it'll just be able to loop and look like it's bouncing up and down and up and down so I'm going to select all these and right click on them and copy the frames. So it's going to copy all these in order. All, uh, what is this? Uh, 14 of the frames. And then I'm going to select these frames that I have here 
and reverse the frames. So that means that now all of them are just in backwards order from how we entered them. But now I'm going to take the frames that I created, select this first frame here, and click Paste Frames. And at the beginning, now it took all the frames that I copied originally that were not reversed, they were in the correct order, and placed them right at the beginning. And now uh, it'll go through and then take the reverse ones at the end. So if we just play it once, we can play this preview. And now it's done its little bounce. But then we can take our loop, and there's these little bars here. And so now if I click play, it's just going to keep looping through this animation. And like I said before, it might be a little bit hard to see on the program that I'm using now. And because I'm recording on the program, the frames per second is dropping quite slowly. As you can see right here in this frame rate bar, it's changing a bit just on how hard my computer is working. And it's, it's working pretty hard right now um, to record the screen and to do this animation um, at the same time. So it's not running it exactly at the 30 frames per second that I wanted and that I selected at the beginning. But when I export it, it'll be able to run quite well. So now we have our animation done and that's good for us. And you can keep copying and pasting and duplicating that as long as you want for however long you want the animation to go for. But I'm good for just the one come down, bounce, and go back up. That looks pretty good to me. So now I'm just going to go up and save it. Just do a go save as into my animations folder. And we're just going to go bouncing ball example two. Oops. Example two. And it's going to save as an animate document. And then uh, as a quick thing if you want to add like different layers I'm just going to add a solid layer of a rectangle which is going to act as my background from here on uh, in this video so I'm just going to select here go there and as you can see it to cover up our ball but um, when you come down to the layers you can just flip it and hold down and move it down and so that means that uh, when you move layers in this, edit, just same thing with like uh, Photoshop or any photo editing or video editing, whatever's on top is what's going to take precedent and what's going to be seen in the visual. So if you bring it to the bottom, it will be seen, but will have all the other layers on top of it be seen first, because we want the ball to be seen first. And I'm just going to double click and label this the background just so I know. That's the background, and what I did to create the background was create a rectangle, change the color, and make that shape there. And so now I have my ball, my background, and I'll just let it play out. And as you can see, it filled in all the keyframes for the background uh, on its own, just because it saw that I already had a lot, and um, I didn't make any adjustments, so it just filled in for the length of keyframes that I had. And if I wanted to, I could shorten it, but I want the background to be there the whole time. So I'm just gonna let it run for the amount of keyframes that I have in the animation. And that looks good to me. I um, am happy with how the animation looks. If I wanted to, I saw some something that wasn't right in my eyes, or if I wanted to make it look a bit smoother, I could go in here and just continue to insert keyframes, or um, you can insert more frames and that way just by right clicking and inserting keyframes individually however uh, that's not needed just however you, it's up to your preference you're you're the artist in your projects and um, it's up to you on how you want it to look but the frames are how you're going to continue to insert um, from there and this bar if let's say you want in between frames 10 and 11 you want to insert one You'll just bring your bar to 10, insert keyframe, and you can see the little arrow pointing down to the right. That means to the right of the frame that you have selected, that's where the frame is going to be added into. So I'm happy with how it is now. So I'm going to go to File, Export, 
and export video slash media. And I'm gonna say that's good, that's good to me. Um, the size and height, uh, everything is the same as it was when I started out. And H.264 is a um, pretty common video format. And I'm gonna make sure that it's in the folder that I want. If it's not, I can just click this folder here and it'll browse and I can go through to whatever folder I want it to export to. I'm click export and then it's going to come into here and once that is done there it is. Alright, so you can see this little symbol there. That's what shows that Paul uh, animation is ready and so I'll go here bring it back start and play it and nope whoops looks like I didn't load super great oopsies lots of things coming up let's see if I can play it correctly this time there it is there's our animation Perfect. Just what happened before was it was taking some time to really fully load the document and it was having some issues downloading everything correctly. Um, and it's just letting me know it's been successfully created and is in my files now. So I can take that file, move it wherever I want, and I'll be good to go. And that has been a virtual tech camp. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.